This is Gustav from Zion Company. Enjoy this teaching. Bless you and please subscribe. Father, we slowly come from out of the kingdom of heaven to creation to bring into this realm your glory, your fullness, your fire. Bring into this realm, Father, all the revelation the mystery and the secret that my spirit, who I am as a son of Yahweh, in the image and likeness, carries in the kingdom of heaven. I carry that into this realm. I begin to overshadow my soul and my body. I begin to overshadow the city. I begin to overshadow the state. I begin to overshadow this nation with all of what my spirit carries. Father, each of us doing it right now. I begin to understand the expansion of the spirit man so that I can have what I need to change in my heart is that which you have in your heart you can change but it's not about what you have in your heart as a soul or a body it's what you have in your heart as a spirit being one consumed with the glory and the fullness the fire of Yahweh so Father spirits we just want to come into the atmosphere and begin to align this realm with all of who we are in you I ask Father that you will let us begin to understand the value of our spirit let us begin to understand the value of who we are let let that which you've destined for us to be become a reality in our lives. Or it's so easy to get distracted by our day, or by the things we, we do in our day, by the things that are happening in our lives, the things that happens in our family, that which is attached to our bloodline, the things that are attached to our DNA. It's so easy for us to get distracted by the attacks of the enemy. And you so desperately want us to rise above all of these things. You want us to begin to see that Satan is no longer part of who we are what we carry does not allow him near us what we carry who we are as sons in the atmosphere yet in creation does not allow him to come near us and a matter of fact as we begin to govern as we begin to align we begin to take back what belongs to us we begin to realign the mountains the high places within the atmosphere of the kingdom of earth satan is losing grip and the only place he has that he can reside is under our feet Father, I pray that you will open us in Revelation tonight. Let us begin to receive, perceive, and understand the things that you're revealing to us as the Ecclesia. And it's more than just a message. It's more than just church. It is you really just wanting to train and equip us in what we need to do, who we are in you, and the value that comes with running in all of the things that you've opened up for us. So, Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you. We glorify, magnify, and exalt your incredible, beautiful, majestic name. Thank you, Yahweh. Amen. And everyone's blind. Amen. How are you guys doing? One of these days I'm going to do this and I'm going to set my little table on fire. Yeah. <laughs> Practicing and practicing. Thanks, Molly. Okay, so what I want to do tonight is I want to I want to bring you to a place of remembrance. I'm sure that's a good place for anybody and everybody. But I want to step back a little bit, and it's not really something that I've done before, though everything we've done and everything we're still going to do is always touching a little bit on what we have done already. It's always just coming a little bit back to where we are, where we have been, and where Yahweh wants to take us to. So it's always just stepping slightly back to get a runway space to go into what Yahweh has. It's kind of what he's doing right now. It's he want to remind you that nothing can stop you. Right, and, and it says it sounds really aggressive because he wants you to understand the power that you carry as one with a will, one that makes a choice, one that chooses. You, you choose because that's the capacity you have. It's not something that Satan can take from you. I've heard many teachings out there that Satan takes your free will. He cannot take your free will. He could change the way you choose 
through what you go through in your life, but it's always up to you whether you choose the right or the wrong, right? Yeah. And of course, Yahweh is not about right and wrong, it's about life. It's about you choosing the dimension of life that is made available to you. It's His desire for you to understand who you are in Him and you choosing to run with what is opened up for you. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. So a very famous scripture we all probably know off by heart. For I know the thoughts uh, that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. And... Um, it carries on, not quite carry on, but it says, How precious uh, also are your thoughts towards me, O God. How vast is the sum of them. Just to remind you that Yahweh is constantly in mind of you. Yeah. Constantly thinking of you. Why? Because there's much to be done. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, I love, I love my son Leon so much. I love my son Gustav so much. I, I love uh, Gracie. I love Danny. I love all these people. They're so beautiful. That's not his thoughts towards us. Right. But it is. But it's not. But it is. Right. right. But he says, when I sent you into the womb, I didn't say, let's play Ring of Ring of Roses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. You agreed to certain things that needs to be done. Yeah. And it is a puzzle piece in everything that needs to come in fruition. And if you're not doing what needs to be done out of what's written on your scroll, then there's someone out there, something out there, angels, uh, saints of old, there's much that cannot come into fruition because you're not doing what you're supposed to do. Now I shared this before. I remember sitting in a meeting and all of a sudden I'm taken into the spirit and I see where I as a spirit being stand over a region within creation as a massive being, I say massive, probably 2,500 feet tall, just standing into the atmosphere right through into the space, the, the cosmos. And I can see this around the Father has shown me this region that is marked out for me to govern, but it's not for me to govern per se because I had something else to do. And as I look up, there's this massive dragon that, that uh, overshadows all of this region. And it looked to me like he was holding on to a chandelier. I later figured out that he's actually, he had a, a crown on his head. So the chandelier was a crown. And I remember standing there and there was these 12 light beings that kept flashing at me. And eventually I realized that uh, in the process of the engagement, I went to the court, I got to an understanding of what needs to happen. I took my sword and instead of doing what I usually did, I literally just cut his belly open and uh, the riches, the revelation, the inside the knowledge, all that which was stored up in him was raining into the region. And as this happened, these 12 light beings, which I, at the beginning I thought was angelic beings, but I realized later on that it was sons of Yahweh like me and you that has been waiting to be established in the governance of the regions that I was overshadowing that this demonic entity in the high place had authority over. Right. And they could not establish or be established in the governance until somebody does what they were supposed to do. It was my function to slay this dragon right. to reestablish the governance for these beings to come into place. I don't know if that makes any sense. So they've been waiting for me. And of course, that triggered much within the nation to begin to apply and put things together because once one of us does what we're supposed to, several others can come in and do what they're supposed to do. Yes. It's like a trigger to open up the gateways and for things to kind of fall into place. Wow. Exciting, right? Yeah. Right. A 2,500 foot goose off? Uh, 225. Oh, I like it. Well, no. 2,500. <laughs> well, I mean, I've expanded. And I, I say this because we don't always understand this. This is not me. This is my sin form. As a spirit being, I have no limitations. I have no, there's nothing that stops me. And as a matter of fact, I'm in my father. My father is standing on the edge of creation. And he has the universe in his hands. I'm in him. I'm not in his little pinky toe. I'm in him, I'm expanded into all of who he is, in his likeness and his image, in his fullness as a spirit being. And that's just for us to be reminded. And I can come back and remind you that out of one being came 6,000 demons. Right? And this was a scrawny, skinny little oak because he, was, he wasn't eating right, he was naked, 
He was struggling, suffering. They already chased him out of the city because what? I don't know. He was eating their dogs and slapping their mothers and you know, kicking the kids. I don't know what he was doing, but he obviously wasn't a good guy, right? And uh, then when the demon said, please, uh, th you know, don't just cast us out, chase us into the pigs. Uh, 6,000 demons come out of one man, goes into 2,000 pigs. Now, I, don't, I don't like re uh, relating myself to a pig, but the average grown mature pig is about 300 pounds. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Uh, I'm about 300 pounds. Oh, wow. 297. Oh, wow. Depends on the weather and the glitch of my download. <laughs> so, out of one man, <laughs> that's probably what, maybe 5 foot 11, maybe 5 foot 10, skinny little guy, maybe 160, maybe 200 pounds at max. I say skinny, that's usually big for most people, but when you see 100 pounds, everyone's kind of skinny around you. I said, I remember when you were doing some of these teachings and you'd come stand here and I look on the video when I leave and you come stand here, it's like, wow, there's so much space around you. <laughs> so out of one being, 6,000 demons and they had to go in 2,000 pigs. That just tells you how big you truly are. And that's not even the full measure because that's a spirit that can expand. There's no limitations. And of course, once I step beyond the veil, there's no time and space. Right. Yahweh wants to remind you that He is constantly thinking about you. Do you know that God thinks about you? Not what you think or what the world thinks, but what God thinks. Yes, yes. You know, because if it was only about what you think about yourself, I'm going to understand, your biggest bully is you. The hardest person on you, who you are is you. <laughs> God has not given us a mission impossible. Every single one of us has the capacity within to finish your call. That's right. And because your call comes out of a timeless space, you can at any given time in your life begin to take it into full fruition. That's just a reminder. That Yahweh is saying, remind yourself that you will always have the time to finish your call. But it's your choice because there's still some in the Word. Matter of fact, I've got a whole list of saints that didn't finish their call because that's what they chose. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places uh, in Christ. Uh, I just want to stop there for a little bit. For a little bit. It, it, it's, it makes a kind of statement here yeah, that if you ever think in any way, fashion or form that you don't have enough or there's not enough wisdom or you don't have enough understanding or you don't have enough time, that is, uh, this scripture should eliminate all of those thoughts. Yeah. Because blessed is, the Lord, uh, 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 blessed is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Yes. Yes. Amen. In Christ. Just as He chose us in Him before the foundations of the world. That we would be holy and blameless before Him. In love He predestined us to adoption as sons through Christ, uh, Jesus Christ to Himself according to the kind intention of His will. It's, it's just reminding us that He's saying, Hey, can you please begin to receive and perceive the things that I've made available for you. Yeah. When you agree to your call, mm -hmm. you know, there's things that we forget. The church have made a ministry out of raising the dead, praying for the sick, healing the sick, cleaning the leopards, leopards, not, not the leopards, <laughs> maybe the tigers. Uh, they need some cleaning, right? Um, the lepers. We've made ministry out of that, but that should be every Christian's day-to-day -day life. That's not part of your call. That's not part of what you're destined to do. That's just who you are. That should just naturally come out of you. Amen. We've made ministries out of that. We've made ministries out of the gifts. Because I've got, got the gift of healing. I find myself, I'm an evangelist. All of a sudden I turn evangelist, revivalist. And I go into nations and heal the sick. And it sounds really good and it is good. But there's much in that that is not on your scroll. 
but we have got many different scrolls. I've done scrolls before, but tonight I want to just remind you that Yahweh is saying that I have called you to very specific tasks. I have set you apart to do exactly what I have called you to. And so we find ourselves, because of our training, because of our leaders in our lives, and just Father taking us through a process of having to gain information, having to gain uh, the boldness to do certain things, that we get stuck yes. in what we think is now our ministry. Yes. Right. You know, all I ever wanted to do was become a pastor. That's after I got born again, right? Before I got born again, I only wanted to kick some pastor's butts. They were kind of like a pain in my, in my tushy. And I said that before, I remember this one friend of mine, and I had the same mentality. Um, he's in church, and the pastor keeps coming around, slapping him on the shoulder. Come on, worship God. Come on, worship God. And, and he turns around and says, if you, if you push me one more time, that's a Philistine, unsaved guy. It looks like me. Don't push me. Especially when I don't know Jesus. You can push me when I know Jesus, because I'm just going to say, oh, bless you. <laughs> I say that three times, and then if you push me again, I'm going to push you back. But so my little Philistine friend is sitting in, is standing in church, and the pastor comes around again, and he pushes him again. How many of you understand? It was the last time he pushed somebody, because the congregation had to help him up off the floor. <laughs> He told me that story. I thought, oh man, I wanted to see it. I put that on YouTube. You would have been a multimillionaire by now. Yeah. Yeah. Decking the pastor. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yahweh is saying, hey, I need you to begin to walk out what you agree to. Remind yourself that Yahweh cannot have you do things that you do not agree to. So when I go into my into the Court of Scrolls to get my, my scroll, that which is written for me. It's my responsibility to begin to walk that out as fast as I can. Yeah. You know, for years I did ministry the way I was taught. I ministered a certain way. I spoke in a certain way. I did things in a certain way. As a matter of fact, I would find myself in a line with 3,000 people in the church. And I say, all the leaders of this church come forward. I will all pray for you personally. Yeah. Not a very clever idea. 250, 300 people later, I'm oh. there until 4 o'clock that morning prophesying over yeah. everybody. Yeah. But that was my life. That's what I enjoyed. Yeah. But that was not my call. When I got my scroll and I opened it up, none of that was in there. Wow. Now, does that mean I'm not to prophesy? No. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah. But that means that because it's not written on my scroll, I never pray for someone to be healed. I never raise someone from the dead again. No, that's not it. Yahweh is just saying... What is on your scroll needs to come out in your fruition, in your life. And I look at my life now. When I got to America, I had one message. But that message got me into the kingdom of heaven. That message opened up my spirit being who I am today yeah. so that I could see my scroll. Once my scroll opened and I saw what I had to begin to do, I all of a sudden had an infused knowledge of the kingdom. And revelation just started pouring into me. Yes. Yes. Yahweh is just saying, let's go. Yahweh has selected a mission for you. You should choose to accept it. Right? Amen. Listen to this. For a child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. And the government will rest on his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be no end to the um, increase of his government or of peace on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from then on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. Yes. Now we all look at this prophecy and understand that it's a prophecy for Yeshua, right? Yeshua to come in. But remind yourself of this. Yeshua came to bring you to a place of restoration. Bring you to a place of a revelation of who you are in Him. That's why I step into Him and I take on His nature. I take on His likeness. 
I take on who he is in creation and I become that to that which is around me. That's why Yahweh said, let us create man in our image and give him dominion over all of creation. Because he's called us to governance. He's called us to literally govern the nation. He's called us to be that wonderful counselor, that mightiness that God carries in his image. We need to project into creation today. What do you think creation is calling out for? God like once. How are you guys doing? God's intention is that Jesus' kingdom will have no end. That it will bring peace and wholeness, uh, not just here, but in the, uh, or in this time, but through everything else that is out there and through all eternity. And remind yourself that we are the kings in his kingdom. Yes. The kings in his kingdom brings judgment and the judgment that we bring to this kingdom is life. Amen. But we have not done what we're supposed to do because we did not understand who we are. We have understood that we have to go out and share our testimonies and we have to tell people about Jesus. And it sounds really valuable and it is. But how many understand now that there's much more to be done than just that? Because what's the point? Now we have churches that's got thousands of members in. And, and I love this. Don't misunderstand me. Look at Joel Austin's church. There's 250,000 people in that church. Mm. You know, you've got um, uh, um, T.D. Jakes. There's 100,000 people in his church. And there's some intense and beautiful revelation coming out there. But a church that's a mile high, a wide, but an inch deep means nothing to nobody. Satan is not afraid of your salvation. Now, I'm not breaking these churches down. I think it's incredible. We're getting people in and people are getting saved. But there has to be discipleship. Moses realized very quickly that I cannot give the people what they need. Because I will die. Because a million people coming to one person, one person cannot teach or train a million people. So what did they do? They took the Jethro system and they broke it up. So the million became, from one there was ten, from the ten there was a hundred, from the hundred there was a thousand, from the thousand there was a hundred thousand or ten thousand, from the ten thousand there was a hundred thousand, from the hundred thousand there was, I don't know what, that's about it. It broke up so that each leadership could break up into smaller portions and have a greater impact on a smaller group of people. Why? Because of discipleship, training, that's needed. Because a group that is massively wide but has no deepness or value to revelation is that it has no discipleship. And that's a problem right now because God said, I need this kingdom not to grow in numbers because what we see salvation to be is not what Yahweh see as, sees as salvation. We say you have to confess, you have to say that you are born again by making a decision for Yeshua, you have to choose this. But he says you just have to believe. <clears throat> so who's saved and who's not saved? Who's going to heaven and who's not going to heaven? That's not a judgment call we can make. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I remember a pastor, a friend of mine, um, he actually worked for a company as a, uh, a church as an um, uh, evangelist and he got paid per salvation. That's, that's kind of commission. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how much you got paid, but I mean, I know that there were some people on there that didn't exist. <laughs> that slow week, I need the money. Hmm. Pete Pompey's. Johnny Depp. So he went down to the cemetery for baptism? Yeah, that's, that's actually a good idea. Maybe if it gets the, if it gets that gig again, we'll do that. But we are just beginning to understand Yahweh's saying it's about discipleship. It's about understanding your value because I've, ne I've never known who I was. Yeah, right. I mean, I've done a lot of things in the kingdom. I, I was a pastor of a church. I, I did all these, um, wow, amazing things, raised the dead. We've seen some incredible miracles, prophesied over thousands of people accurately. And then I saw my scroll and I'm thinking, what have I been doing for the last 18 years? That wasn't on my scroll. None of that stuff, none of that stuff was on my scroll, doesn't mean that I wasn't supposed to do any of it. It was still part of my training, but I needed to get to a place where I know 
what is written so that I can fulfill the things that I agreed to in creation. I never knew that Yahweh on uh, my scroll has written states within you in, in America that I have a governance over. I know that it sounds crazy, but it's not something physical. Yeah. It's a spiritual thing. Yahweh is teaching me at this point yeah. the things that I haven't even started talking about yet because I have no clue what he's talking about. There's things in, in happening in the spirit realm right now in the kingdom of heaven uh, from out of the courts, the Sanhedrin of Yahweh, that I don't even understand. I'm just sitting there in awe as he's really trying to pour into me. Yeah. Now we're beginning to understand now if you've walked with the seven spirits for long enough, they get to send you to the Father and He begins to speak into your life and into your heart. Yeah. Yeah. It's a whole different ball game, a whole other place of revelation. Yeah. But am I understanding some of the stuff? I have no clue. I feel like a little baby. I am a little baby. But Yahweh is just wanting to remind us tonight, it's time to step up into that place in your life where you begin to say yes, where you begin to choose a little bit more than what you chose yesterday. Right. Help us, God. Help us, God. See, it's, it's our choice. God says, uh, uh, and, and it's going to get, he's going to get his way no matter what you choose. Things are going to fall into place. He wants to use you for it. But how many of you understand? If you say no, someone else is going to rise up and say yes. That's right. God's not limited to you choosing the right thing. Yes. The pathway of the tree of life, this is what you choose. Or the do-it-yourself pathway of the knowledge of good and evil. Uh, his way or my way? It sounds more like his way or the highway. Yeah. <laughs> Don't miss your destiny. And I want to remind you, and I think we forget this sometimes, your purpose is what's on earth for you. From your birth to your death, if that's what you believe. Right? right? If, if, if I do not have a death, then from the day of my birth to where I leave the earth, and begin to reside in the kingdom of heaven in a full, full portion. That's my purpose. My destiny is eternal. So the pathway from my birth to my death, if that's what I have as my portion, is what I need to fulfill according to what's written on my scroll. And the reason I have to fulfill it is because certain things has to align in creation for the puzzle to come into place. That's why the church, you know, it looks so great. We've got revivalists, we've got all this wonderful things happening. People are getting raised from the dead. We're going into nations, we're preaching the gospel. It's wonderful, but no one is doing what's written on their scrolls. Right. Well, it's not, oh, it's <laughs> the church sees it as foolishness. Oh, wow. So if anybody here knows Ian Clayton, is one of my mentors, and the things he teaches is mind blowing. Um, a lot of what I teach come out of some of the things he teaches and I just break it up into smaller portions mainly for myself to understand and out of that I have received intense revelation on other things that I've gone into but um, much that's out there some of these incredible revivalists make statements like this who cares about the celestial council if there's people out there that's not saved now that makes a lot of sense if you're a revivalist, but there's revelation and mysteries and secrets that Yahweh is revealing to the mature sons that it's going to bring so the salvation to a whole other realm. Right. Amen. Because let me tell you something, if Moses in today's life had to come out of the mountain and thousands of people saw him coming out lightning and fire. Now remind yourself in the Hebrew culture, lightning and fire was voices in fire. It was not just a, a lightning and fire. It was literally out of him came voices speaking. Right. Wow, wow. Fire to such an extent that he smashed the golden calf into powder. Now imagine that we begin to walk as sons in the earth and that's what the unbeliever sees. Right. Wow. <laughs> you know, we are the ark of Yahweh. Right. Yes. right? And, and we understand in the Old Testament this, the ark is in the Philistine hands. I say Philistine, that's not quite whose hands it were, but it was in heathen's hands. And they have this massive golden statue of a, a god that they serve, some water demon. And the next morning, the demon, uh, the statue is lying on his face. 
No, it's, no one can push it over. No one could pull it. But the presence of Yahweh had to bring that thing to submission. So they pick it back up. The next day, they come there again, and it's a little bit shorter this time. The heads are gone, broken off, and the hands are broken off. Right? And we're beginning to understand that Hebrew culture doesn't mean, okay, well, you don't have a head, so sorry. You don't have any hands, well, sorry. We understand that each one of those components means something intense. That's why Yahweh says that as a bird has a nest and the, ox, the, the fox has a a hole in the man, or the son of man doesn't have a place to lay his head. Mm -hmm. He wasn't talking about him doesn't have a place to sleep. He was talking about the governance. Mm -hmm. right? We're beginning to understand that when the head falls off, there's no leadership. Right. There's no governance. The hand represents the supply. You guys okay? Yeah. But Yahweh is just saying that there's nothing that can stand in the presence of Yahweh. And if we begin to understand who we are, we are those carrying His presence, His kingdom. We carry His governance and creation. And when we as the sons represent that full dimension of who we are in creation, things are going to bow to us. Yes, yes. Now that's not, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Oh, you want people to bow to you? No. no the demons will literally fall to the ground and be shattered. Not because of who I am, because of what I carry. The value and the fullness of who Yahweh is. I mean, let me just quickly remind you guys. Now I know much has gone on in the city. Much has gone on in the city. But um, certain things happen in, in an engagement I had within the, the city, within um, Bourbon Street. Then a couple of months later, myself and Gracie goes and we walk through this street and we did certain things. Not even six months later, there's now a nightclub there saying some sinners that has full revival taking place there on Monday night. Why? Why? Well, I'm not taking any credit for it, but we have done some stuff. We have destroyed some high places and we have breathed into place the fullness of who Yahweh is. Because there's sons and there's daughters that begin to understand who we are. And as we go into creation, things align. And it makes the work of everyone else easier. That's why when Yahweh says, hey, can we begin to fulfill our destiny? Can we begin to be reminded of who we are? So we can begin to walk, walk out in creation who we are destined to be. Things are going to fall into place. Yes. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Yahweh is saying, in all of this, you have to get to the place in your life where you constantly check yourself. Yes. You know, there's, uh, because we are engaging in stuff that is so new in Revelation, and also in the same breath, it's not new, but it's new to us. And some of the stuff is freaking us out. Some of the stuff is freaking out the church. So there's frustration and there's irritation. And you might think to yourself, well, you know, Satan is the author of that. Satan is the author of nothing. He's the author of absolutely nothing. Okay? And I understand that. He does not have that capacity in him to recreate anything afresh. Amen. He has a Amen. truth in him that is distorted and that can bring destruction only because of the unalignment that's in him. Yes. Yes. We have become cynical, skeptical, critical, judgmental because of past experiences, disappointments, and disillusionment. Yes. Things that we perceived one way and then when it doesn't happen the way that we perceive it should, then we get upset, depressed, and angry at what Yahweh is busy teaching us. Well, that's why I didn't believe it in the beginning. That's why it's not true. It might work for them, but it doesn't work for me. That means it's actually not a truth. Mm -hmm. So we have to constantly check ourselves. That's what the kingdom of heaven is there for. You don't go in to the kingdom of heaven because you are perfected. You go in to become perfected. That's right. Now we understand that was, and I say was, maybe it still is, the job or the function of the fivefold. But how many of you understand, as much as I love the body of Christ, as much as I love the church, the fivefold ministries are not doing what they're supposed to do. Because they're supposed to perfect the church. Yes. Right? I see more imperfection than ever before. That is what can happen when we allow lives, circumstances,
to affect how we see ourselves and our future, rather than what God says about us. The same is true if we have become uh, earthbound rather than heavenly, settlers uh, rather than pioneers, wow. Mm. Wow. passive, lazy, selfish, fearful, rebellious, rebellious wow. comfortable, yeah. safe, <laughs> materialistic. Wow. None of these will help you fulfill your destiny. You know, I, I'm just addressing some things in the Spirit because we remind ourselves that we get into a rut. Right. And so we do the same thing over and over again, seeing the same result, not realizing that the result's not what it's supposed to be. It looks good, smells good, but in reality it's just a repeat of yeah. the same thing over and over yeah. again. We get to call it a new thing because we are stuck in a mentality. And I know that we've seen and experienced this several times. I see it in the church all the time. God's doing a new thing. <laughs> no, that's the exact same thing. <laughs> the new thing, you've already rejected. Wow. <laughs> I have not preached in a church on a Sunday in months. I don't get invited to go preach at churches. Because they don't like this. Right. 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 They don't like someone to say, hey, you've been wrong for the last 200 years. Right. Can we change the way we do things, please? Yes. Right. Stop manipulating the church and tithing and beginning to understand what the value of what Yahweh wants to do really is all about. Yes. It's not about you having to pay your building. It's not about you having to manipulate someone to give because otherwise you don't have and then the church is not going to fulfill itself. It's all about holding in, gathering, holding people in, not, not releasing them, not filling them up. Why? Right. Because we don't understand the purpose. Right. And having someone tell us this, oh. no, 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 no. <laughs> I know why I weigh 300 pounds and mostly muscle. I say mostly because there's some McDonald's hanging on the sides here. <laughs> but I know people don't come to my face. They just ignore me. I, 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 I preach in some churches and then I, I say things that they don't like. Right. I'd rather not have you come back. Because my people are realizing, oh wait, he's talking the truth. Yeah. It's okay. I'm an extremely busy person. I have four kids and a beautiful wife. Yes. Yes. You know, I have... An average of five to six meetings a week, every week. Wow. I, I love to preach in churches. As a matter of fact, that's what I do. Like I have a church I go to on Sunday and I, I minister in that church all the time. Wow. And I love it. I love my pastor. He's an incredible man of God. Craig Wells. I honor him. I respect him. He walks in phenomenal revelation and insight. Right. He's right. a phenomenal man of God. His team is incredible. His lineage in, in, in spiritual father and spiritual grandparents are incredible. We actually connect it in that same lineage. Yes, yes, um, yes. It's incredible. But Yahweh is saying, it, if the truth is not going into the places that needs the truth, then something needs to align. Yes, yes. You know, uh, um, I say apostle, but um, Mike Barnett prophesied over me in a couple of months ago, and he said that your Sundays will open up. Meaning that people will start inviting me to churches on Sundays. Amen. And I'm not excited about it because I already don't have a lot of time to spend with my family. Especially now that my wife works. But I know the value of this truth, part of the destiny, part of the puzzle piece that will begin to align things. Amen. Let me say something. I don't even like saying this, but I'm going to say it. Because I, people are listening and thinking, oh, I'm going to let him come minister at our church. Yeah. Well, before you do, let me right. share some testimony quickly. <laughs> so I am invited to have a conference in a church in Homer a couple of years ago. I did a four-day conference, and I taught on dividing soul and spirit warfare, but out of this realm, not this realm, beyond the veil. Four-day four, 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 four four conference, and um, a lot of prophetic words speaking into the atmosphere, just aligning things, coming into place, lived in the pastor's house, uh, just engaged my spirit into all of destiny and purpose for the region. 
the very next week, the church split up. The assistant pastor took over the church and the pastor wanted to start the meetings from his house. Because there needed to be alignment. I go into a business and uh, I begin a spirit school there and it goes really well, incredible. <coughs> but what I do is I breathe alignment into place. Within a month of being there, they realize that there's funds going missing and their partnership begins to see things that they never saw before. Huh. Before I know it, they all break up to their own cells. The partnerships no longer exist. They move out of the building and they go back their own separate ways. Oh, wow. So you might say, okay, so you're not coming to my church. <laughs> <laughs> and I understand. Well, bless your darling heart, sweetie. But Yahweh wants to bring alignment. See, we so easily govern things in our own way. Because we don't know the purpose. We don't know who we are. And we don't know what Yahweh has for us. We will just continue to do things the way we think it's working. But it wasn't working. The church as it was, wasn't working. Because there was, there was something in there that shouldn't have been in there. Right. The business didn't work in the way it was supposed to work because there was something in it that shouldn't have been in it. Right. And so it continued. Every, everywhere I go, that's kind of what happens. Wow. Why? Because they're not quite the same, but Yahweh wants to bring alignment. That's what it is. That's what we do. That's what a son, that's what a daughter does. Someone walking in their full capacity as one living and breathing out his destiny has the capacity to bring alignment everywhere I go. Wherever I put my foot, that place belongs to me. How you guys doing? Good, good. I would say it's time to change. When Jesus looked at the destiny within and on our scrolls, it is that what he sees in our lives. When Jesus looks at the destiny written on our scroll, it is that uh, what he sees in our lives. Does that make sense? I'm, not, I'm reading my own note and I'm thinking, hmm. That's what Yeshua sees. He doesn't just look at your life and where you're at. He looks at what's written on your scroll. And he looks at where your life is at. And he's constantly trying to redirect you. Yeah. But, about, you know, Satan, and I don't want to give this thing any credit. He's under my feet. Right. But he has the capacity to change your perception by binding you to an understanding of uh, things. A religious bondage in what you believe, in your, in your belief system. And if he has you bound, then nothing's going to get you out of that place. It's time to choose, right? We can choose to serve God in the manner that he's opened up for us right now. <coughs> or we can just go back to our old way of doing it with the same results. And of course, we don't see that there was no results. We don't see it. Well, there was salvation, and there were signs and wonders and miracles. Wow, that's great. But nothing's aligned. There's still giants on the mountains. Yes. There's still dragons in the atmosphere in high places, yes. governing the gifts, the callings, the revelation, the insight, all that Yahweh is pouring into the earth for the sons, and it's being blocked because we don't know what to govern, and we don't know who we are. We can choose to follow what God says in His Word, or we can choose to follow the bondage that we've walked in from the very beginning. See, if His Word is true, then it's supposed to make you free. That's right. If the church is not free, then it's either God saying, well, I was just joking, or it's because it's not the truth. Right. Now you say, well, it has to be the truth because it comes out of the Word. But it comes out of man's perception of the word, and it's only one portion, only a, a dimension of the word, not the fullness of the word. We understand that it's more than just rhema, logos, and the living. There's dimensions within each of those, and we have to engage all to have the full measure. Yes, yes. We can choose to worship in spirit and in truth, or we can choose to go back and worship the way we always did. 
you know, and, and, and I know that we need to understand, I'm not saying that the way we worship now is not the way we're supposed to worship. But it's the revelation in worship, understand that I can only truly worship when I'm in the Spirit. Now if 90% of the church has never been in the Spirit, then what are we doing on a Sunday when there's music playing? I'm telling you what we're not, what, what doing, not, not doing, and that's worship. We might be singing nice songs, we might be repenting of weak sins, or sins that we did in the week, and it looks really great, snot and tears, makeup smudged. And screaming out, we love you, Jesus. But it's because of all I sinned in this week, and I really don't want to go to hell if I die or a bus hits me. So please forgive my sins. Um, meet my needs. I'm struggling financially. Please, that's my relationship with you. Yeah. Wow. Looks great, but it has no value. Why? Because my Christian faith is, is uh, subdued to my relationship in the closet with Him. Wow. It's not what, cor what happens corporately. God becomes a big vending machine. Yes, exactly. And that's the opposite wow. of who he wants to be. Wow. That's nice. That's true. Wow. How are you guys doing? I'm almost done. Thank you, Jesus. He's almost done. Hallelujah. <laughs> Slap your lips. Help me, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Get it over with, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah. And Joshua says, If it is disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord... Choose for yourself today whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now, I'm not talking about, are you backsliding? Are you love Jesus? You're not Jesus. Are you part of the world? Are you doing all these things? Are you smoking and drinking and sleeping around and watching pornography? I'm not talking about any of that stuff. I'm talking about there is an age that has opened up. And Yahweh has opened up several dimensions of different ages over the last 10 years. And He wants us to birth through those dimensions so we can have the framework for what is releasing right now. Yes, yes. Because if you're stuck in a, in a matrix, in an age, then you're not going to be birthing into the next phase and you're going to hold on to what you have. And, and, and even if you have already moved on, but you didn't understand the new age, you didn't understand what Yahweh is doing in Revelation, is pouring in right now, and you find yourself going back, how many of you understand that is actually something that's not possible? I've never actually seen a baby try that, and I really don't want to. But uh, going back into the mother's womb is really not an option. But it could be in a mental state where you just want to go back to the old way, constantly finding you in, the, in that place where you don't understand what Yahweh is doing right now, but you understood pretty good what was going on in the previous age, that you want to go back all the time. Yahweh is saying, it's time to move out of that place. I'm not saying leave your church. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying move your mentality out of the previous age and go into what Yahweh has. You sit in the mystery and it unfolds for you. A destiny is designed for us to make an eternal difference. Choose it and nothing can stop you. We will not uh, allow our past to rob us of our future, right? We are intended to be overcomers, prevailing over every obstacle that is placed in our way. His desire for you is to choose what's written on your scroll tonight and run with it in full fruition. Amen. Let's stand. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we come here before you throne. I want you to do this exercise with me. I want you to really just close your eyes. You don't have to close your eyes, but it's usually just easier. Because you're not distracted. You're not looking at all kinds of things that's happening around the room. But just, just close your eyes. Maybe you're at your home. Maybe in your house. Maybe at work. Maybe later you'll be on YouTube. But uh, I want you to just close your eyes. And I want you to find yourself really at His throne. You know, I've done this several times in my walk with Yahweh, just finding myself at His throne and absolute surrender to Him, just giving myself over to Him and allowing Him to have Lordship over me. And this is the process of that living sacrifice, that place within your heart where you surrender every dimension of who you are to Him. Allow Him to slit your throat. <laughs> that sounds, whoa. Okay, let's get out of this meeting. It's mass suicide on its way. But it's spiritual. I present myself. And the process of the living sacrifice was... They start by cutting his throat, draining the blood. 
Right, eventually they will cut off the head, they will open up the chest, they will clean out the innards, they cut off the legs, they take off the skin. And each one of these parts that's removed has a, 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 a revelation in it for, of your surrender. And once the, the high priest has the offer, the offering or the sacrifice in his hands, he presents it to the Father. I want you to allow Yeshua to present you as a living sacrifice to the Father. Now remind yourself of this, within your, within your, your being as a spirit, you have your scroll. And once, you're, when you, once you present yourself as a living sacrifice, the unfolding of that scroll begins. So present yourself to the Father as, as Yeshua. You present yourself to Yeshua. He presents you to the Father. And it, it begins to unfold in you. You begin to have revelation. You begin to have an insight. You begin to have an understanding of what Yahweh has called you to. Of what Yahweh is bringing into your being. The unfolding of your scroll. You begin to understand what is written on it. You can't read it per se, but there's an infused knowledge, a desire, change, a shift. Yahweh said, I'll put my desires according to your scroll in your heart. I'll put my will according to what's written on your scroll in your heart. You'll begin to desire things. You'll begin to want to be around certain people. You'll begin to want to go to certain places. And you'll begin to have a desire to cry in your heart for certain people. And you'll begin to find yourself interceding and just governing and expanding your spirit over it. So it can begin to change and fold into what it's supposed to be. Father, I ask that as we begin to sit in this place of mystery and you begin to unfold the scroll for each one in this room, those on Facebook watching, Father, those that will still watch later on YouTube, Lord, let's begin to see what and who we are in you. What are we destined for? Father, we have already gone into the scroll, into the, the court of scrolls, Father. We've seen our, our scroll. We have taken it. it placed it in our bellies in the spirit. And so, Father, now as we present ourselves as a living sacrifice and begin to unfold itself, in revelation of who we truly are and what we agreed to before we were sent into the mother's womb. Lord, I ask that you'll bring, begin to breathe this into place, release it into the hearts of everyone in this room. Let's open up as spirit beings so we can know where and what and how we're done with making mistakes, Father. We are perfected in you. That's what you promise. That's what you say. That's where we live and move and have our being. In your fullness, Father, we are surrounded by your kingdom. We are surrounded by your glory, your fire, your fullness. And that full supply of heaven is where we are at, Father. And so when you begin to unveil our destiny, you begin to unveil the purpose, that which is written on the scroll, Father, in Revelation, come to us. I pray, Father, for everyone in this room, for things to just begin to fall into place so that the choices we should make can be made easily that the desires we have can be in the right timing for everything that you release and reveal to us. Father, we love you, we praise you, we thank you for who and what you are in our lives and who we are in you, my King. You're majestic and beautiful, and we glorify your name. Amen. 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 Reminder, Can next... Can some serious words? We had to do that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, next week. Um, God, God gave me some serious words to so deliver. Sad, yeah. And um, I'll blow the show four or five times, please. Well, the first um, words are that um, God's army is the highest army, the purest army, and the fastest army. Amen. And that no army can stand against God's end time army. And um, God's going to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. It's going to be beyond our minds. Wow. And he's saying, eye has not seen, ear has not heard what God has prepared for those who love him. Amen. Amen. And he's saying, my children, be very strong and very courageous. For I am with you wherever you go. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> He's saying, um, follow the captain of the Lord of hosts yeah. one step at a time. Right. Yeah. I say that again. Yeah. Follow the captain of the Lord of hosts one step at a time. Yeah. I'm going to say it one more time. 
follow the captain of the Lord of hosts one step at a time, and he's saying we're going to live from victory to victory. Amen. Yes. yes, Lord. Yeah, and he's saying we're God's victorious, mighty warriors, and he's saying yeah. love your heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Yes. 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 Wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Tracy. Yes. Amen. Uh, how you yeah. get to read your own handwriting. <laughs> You should have been a doctor, young lady. <laughs> I didn't want to forget. <laughs> so next week is Yom Kippur. Yes, very important. Uh, for, uh, so next week we're not going to have spiritual school yet, but it's going to be Yom Kippur. It's uh, Hadat Yeshua. So please do come. I think we'll have a great time. Don't neglect the gathering of the saints, right? And it's for the whole week. It's start on Monday? No, no it's just uh, Tuesday evening and Wednesday. Tuesday, Wednesday? Yeah. Okay, great. Bless you guys. Love you guys. See you.